Welcome back, everybody. We are here again from the Coastal Seafoods Test Kitchen. I am Kian, and today we're going to be cooking up some absolutely beautiful peel and eat shrimps. This here is a wonderful 8 to 12 easy peel. And easy peel means that it still has a shell on, but it's been split down the back and the vein has been removed. This makes it easy to kind of cook whole with the shrimp shell on, which will help give you all that extra flavor, which is awesome. Cooking shell on is always preferred, um, but it's also gonna be easier to eat in the end. So these are really great. Again, this is, a, this is an 8-12 jumbo shrimp. Beautiful, easy peel, super simple to cook. And we're gonna do a little take today on shrimp and grits, but we're gonna jazz it up just a little bit and do it different. Um, we're actually going to do a miso butter shrimp and grits. So this is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and get my pan going here. I want it hot because we're going to start our grits. And to start grits, basically, we're going to make this kind of like a creamy polenta style grit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add six parts liquid. Now you can do this a lot of different ways. You could do this with just water. I'm using chicken stock here. And again, I'm looking for about six parts. So I'm gonna do about three parts of this. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water here. So I've got three parts chicken stock. And then I'm gonna add in some half and half too. This is gonna give it some richness. Now you can change these rest, this ratio up however you want. You can do, uh, all chicken stock, you could do all water, you could do two parts water, two parts chicken stock, two parts cream. Again, you can kind of do this a lot of different ways. I'm gonna add just a little bit more water just to kind of make sure we get the right amount and just thin it out a little bit. So we're gonna get this going and I want this to come up to a boil. And once this gets to a boil, we're gonna add our grits. Uh, these are great to have on hand. You can do these a lot of different ways. Um, you can make a nice creamy grit, or you could make uh, uh, basically polenta cakes, where you make your creamy grits, pour them out on a baking sheet, let it chill in your refrigerator, pull it out, remove it from the baking sheet, cut into squares, and sear it off. That's great for a lot of things. Uh, you could do that for breakfast with a fried egg and some bacon um, and some shrimp. That would be awesome. You could do, again, just so many different ways you could kind of go about using grits. Um, again, it's basically just a really coarse ground cornmeal. Um, so you could also use them for dredging things if you wanted to, if you like a real chunky, crispy kind of crust on certain things, that would work wonderfully. So again, there's a lot of different things you can kind of do. And I just want to bring this up to a boil. And then I'm going to start to add my grits, which I'm going to that four. In fact, let's just go ahead and get this measured out right now. So again, our ratio basically, what we're looking to do is six parts liquid to one part grits. So I added six of these half pint containers and I'm going to add one of these worth of grits. And this is going to get us a really nice sort of creamy consistency, which is exactly what we want. Uh, it's going to be just a beautiful vessel for these grits, uh, for the shrimp, I mean. The grits are the vessel for the shrimp. So, again, yeah, super easy, super nice. It's going to be delicious. <laughs> Baba Cup has a bunch of recipes, too. I bet they do. I, have, I would be shocked if they were not stocked up on shrimp recipes for months. So, I guess you could check that out if you wanted to. Or... You can check out this pretty uh, modern take, which I'm guessing they don't have the recipe for. Um, this is gonna be a lot of fun. So when this starts to go, let's start to get our vegetables prepped here. I've got a little bit of that cabbage left over that we had from last week. I'm just gonna kind of remove the stem for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this into strips. And then instead of leaving it in strips this time, like we kind of have in the past, I'm gonna cut it down into smaller chunks. This is gonna be kind of part of our sauce. So I want it just a little bit smaller. And we can do the same with this little stem piece that we removed. Uh, just cut it fairly small so that it 
this up and softens up the way we want it to. And then we're gonna take our onion and we're gonna chop this as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a bunch of vertical slices down, keeping it fairly fine. And remember, when you're cutting onions, keep your hand in kind of this claw shape. That's gonna prevent you from getting cut. Your blade will kind of rest against the edge of your fingers and you will be safer while you do this. And safety is a priority here. All right, so I got these all nice and cut down, ready to rock and roll. I've got a few other ingredients that I'm gonna show off to in a bit here to help kind of amp this up a little bit. Again, this is gonna be absolutely delicious. Really looking forward to what's gonna happen here. My milk is simmering, milk and chicken stock. Again, when doing this, you can use kind of whatever combination of liquids that you want. Um, the more dairy you add, the creamier and richer it's gonna be. Uh, you could also use whole milk if you wanted to, or 2%, that would be absolutely fine. Um, or you could just use all chicken stock. You could use all water. You could use vegetable stock if you wanted to make, say, make this vegan. Um, you know, and not obviously add the shrimp to it, but you could do other things um, instead of shrimp. Uh, you could do some seared tofu chunks with this miso. That would be really nice. Uh, you obviously also have to admit the butter, but uh, again, just really nice stuff. So a lot of different possibilities here. And my milk's just about at a simmer, so this will go just a second. Remember, if you have questions, you can ask. I'm kind of following along here or trying to as best as possible. There we go. Uh, so feel free to ask any questions as we go. I'll happily answer those, whether they're seafood related or not. Uh, in terms of kind of housekeeping news, just to bring you up to date, we're still going strong. You may have seen this morning that we have posted, and last night, uh, we've got some slightly adjusted hours now. So instead of our normal 10 to seven, we kind of looked at what happened last week in terms of foot traffic and things like that and online orders. So what we've done is we've actually gone down to 11 to 6. So 11 to 6 are the hours, Monday through Friday, you can come down and get your curbside pickup orders if you want, or place your online orders for that window, um, or our delivery orders are also there. So again, uh, Monday through Friday, 10, I'm sorry, Monday through Friday, 11 to 6, and then Tuesday, uh, Saturday and Sunday, 10 to 4. Sorry, let me get that right. Monday through Friday, 11 to 6, Saturday, Sunday, 10 to 4. So again, those are kind of our new adjusted hours for the time being. So anything you want, you know, if you're coming down to place an order or if you want to um, place that online, those are the hours that you'd be able to pick up. If you are using online, I will say that you can come down sort of any time, you can place your order anytime you want and pre-schedule ahead. So if you wanted something for Friday, you could actually place that order now delivery won't come to you. Well, funny you mention that. So we know the delivery radius. I'm gonna add these grits here just kind of slowly to this because we're where we want to be. Um, and I'm just gonna sort of stir gently here. Now these grits are gonna thicken up in this liquid, which is gonna be nice and exactly what we want. So just make sure we get all of that out of there. And I'm just gonna let this cook on a simmer until they start to thicken up and make a really nice porridge. Well, that happens, I'm actually gonna move this to the stove behind me and let this do its thing back here when we get our other stuff ready to go. So get this burner going. Get it down kind of low, because we, we don't need much heat here. We just need it to kind of keep simmering, and you just wanna sort of stir it every once in a while, make sure things aren't sticking to the bottom, Make sure those grits are sort of doing what they need to do in terms of thickening and getting nice and rich. Well, perfect. So, if delivery is what you're after and you are outside of our delivery radius, one thing that you can look for is on our website, there's a new link called Lobstergram. Now, Lobstergram is our sister company. They are actually a national company that does seafood delivery across the country. So you could actually place some orders for them. Now, obviously they're not gonna have all of the fresh fish and stuff that you get from us, but you can get lobsters, they sell shrimp. There's a lot of different things that you can order from them. Obviously, it's a longer delivery time, as it's gonna take probably a few days after you place the order, but that is an option. 
So just because you live outside of that 16 mile radius from either Minneapolis or St. Paul, doesn't mean that you still can't get stuff. Um, you could absolutely use Lobstergram. It's a great way to go, it's a great service. Um, and we've added that link to our website. So for sure check that out. Very doable, as long as you plan ahead a little bit, you could order some bags of shrimp, you could order your lobsters. Um, again, they've got all kinds of different items up there that you could do, so play. if you're worried about that, definitely that's an option, check that out. And they're probably adding more stuff just like we are. So what I've got here is I've got my skillet over high heat. I wanna bring my oil up to temperature. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by searing off these shrimp. I'm not gonna cook them all the way through. I just wanna get a good hard sear on them and develop a little bit of color. And then from that point, I'm gonna start building our sauce. Make sure my grits are doing well still. Oh yeah, they're starting to thicken up nicely here. It's exactly what we want. Just make sure you are good and stirred in. Try not to make a mess. But we want this to come up to like a nice, thick, sort of porridge consistency. And that's what we're going to get with this just nice, kind of slow simmer method here. See, it's already starting to come together. We don't want those grits, grits to clump too much either. So we just want to kind of stir and keep it going and get a nice, smooth consistency, which will happen here. All right. so. My oil is good and hot, so I'm going to go ahead and start searing off these shrimp. Now, you can hear that as soon as that shrimp hits the pan, it starts to go, which is exactly what we want. Now, if you were cooking up a lot of shrimp, you might want to do this step in batches, um, because the shrimp will cool down the temperature of the pan. I'm using just enough here, so that's not going to really be a problem. But I want to get this nice, and hard sear. So I'm going to let this go for just a few minutes there. And I'm going to go back to my grits and sort of keep stirring. Yeah, these are looking nice, real nice. I'm also going to go ahead at this point and add in a touch of salt. Get, make sure they're nice and seasoned. I'm going to turn down my heat just a little bit. It's cooking pretty well. Now what we're really doing here is we're rehydrating these grits. Again, to kind of make a porridge. And this is going to be really thick and creamy. And you can, you'll see these done a lot of different ways. Um, sometimes people will finish these with cheese. We're going to finish them with a good amount of butter to make them nice and creamy and decadent exactly what we're looking for. Check my shrimp here. It's coming along pretty nicely. I still want to develop a little bit more flavor because what I'm doing is by searing it in the oil like this, I'm basically infusing that oil with that shrimp flavor. So the shrimp flavor is going to carry through the entirety of this dish, which is exactly what we want. So we want to get a good hard sear on those shrimp shells and infuse that oil. And then we're going to cook our onions and our cabbage in that and saute that off until they start to soften and we'll build the sauce around that as we go. So this is just a really great way to do this kind of thing. Now the grits, you know, generally these take, you know, 15, 20 minutes or so to cook. So it does take a little while, but it gives you time to do other things. Again, as long as you, you don't want to completely walk away from this, but you definitely, uh, can do a few other things, you know, get your vegetables prepped, get your shrimp cooking like we're doing here. Uh, it's good to try to stay good and organized so that you can manage your workflow in a kitchen. Again, very, very, very important. Again, this is getting really nice here. As soon as it starts to come together a little bit more, I'll show you what we're looking at. So we are coming along very, very well. Some of our shrimp is getting nice and crusty brown. This is exactly what I want. I'm going to go ahead and just flip. Now remember, we are not cooking these through at this particular point. We are just searing the outside. We're going to actually finish the shrimp in the sauce. 
butter is indeed love. Gotta love the butter, and this this recipe is gonna be rich with it, which is what we want. We want a nice, rich, hearty shrimp and grits. So that's what we're gonna achieve here. Oh, again, these are looking great. Really, really good. I'm gonna give it a little bit more heat. These ovens are probably a little bit more finicky than the ones you would use at home in terms of heat control, which is good for a lot of things. Again, it gives me a lot, wide range of control, but I also kind of have to manage my heat a little more than you might. If you were using an electric stove, you could keep this on a fairly steady trajectory, which is what you want. So again, that's cooking away there. My shrimp are looking great. Again, they're not cooked through but we're getting this, this really excellent sear. This is what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off, and I'm gonna add my other vegetables. Which is again, exactly what I want to do. These are looking absolutely beautiful. Oh yeah. Nice and golden brown, yet still pretty raw on the inside, which is, exactly where we need to be. So now I'm gonna add my onions in first and get these sauteing off. So I'm gonna give these just a few minutes to kind of soften on their own before I add the cabbage back in. Now we are not looking to get color on these. We are just looking to get them softened. So we're gonna let that kind of go and do its thing. I'm gonna turn down the heat again on my grits. Get this stirred. We're bubbling pretty hard back here. Again, you don't want the grits to scorch, so make sure you keep on stirring. Make sure it's nice and beautiful and creamy. Again, we're coming along really well here. Exactly what we want. See on the spatula, it's starting to kind of coat, which is good. Just beautiful. Got that back down to sort of low heat there. I got my onions. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my cabbage now. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the heat a little bit on this. Because we're cooking up pretty good here. And I just want that cabbage to start to soften. So again, we're going nice. And while that goes, let me show you where it is we want our shrimp to be. So you can see here, they're nice and golden brown, which is exactly what we want. But on the inside, they're still pretty opaque, which is again, what we want. You want that to be kind of raw in the center. And the easy peels are nice for this because it allows you to see in pretty well. Uh, so you can kind of monitor what you're doing, which is again, is great. So I've got my cabbage softening, I've got my grits working, and we've got some nice things happening back here. Really gorgeous. These are getting super silky and nice. It's taking in that cream and that stock. We're gonna wind up with something really rich and really flavorful. Beautiful. So another thing I wanted to mention while we get this going is our senior discount is still available. So any seniors, veterans, or people who are generally considered at risk, you can use the discount code SENIORVET at, uh, for your online orders at checkout and get that 20% off. So remember to do that. Um, and if you wanna stay more informed on updates around the store, um, definitely make sure to uh, subscribe to our newsletter, which you can do right at coastalseafoods.com. There's a subscribe to the newsletter link so definitely keep that in mind. Then you'll get all the up-to-date coupon codes and things like that that are available, which was awesome. You know, last Friday we were able to do the, uh, we were able to manage the student discount, which was great, which we opened up not just students and educators, but also healthcare workers. So we will do that again this Friday. So definitely pay attention for that. Um, the senior veteran discount uh, and at risk, that is just good always, we're not taking that away. So again, if you're a senior, a vet, anything like that, uh, definitely make sure to do that. 
So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add in a couple tablespoons of butter and sort of get this working in the pan. And sort of toss around, get everything nice and coated in that butter. That's what we want. Double check my grits here. Oh yeah. This is really starting to get where we need it to be. Which is perfect, perfect, perfect. Again, just sort of the slow stirring. Pay attention to just beautiful. Shrimp and grits is just one of those all time classic recipes that it's really hard to go wrong with. And this is a little bit of a different take. Uh, I really wanted to do a miso shrimp. I thought that would be fun. And then weirdly enough, I saw somebody do a recipe for that over this weekend. So I decided to change it up last minute just a little bit and go uh, instead with uh, miso shrimp and grits. So basically something very, very similar, um, but also kind of dancing up a little bit of a, of a classic, making it a little bit more modern. So what I've got here are some piquillo peppers. This is just a jar of peppers. And I've actually gone ahead and like pre-chopped these just to make this a little bit easier. Um, we do sell these online. You could use Fresno chilies in place of these if you wanted to, which have a good amount of heat to them. That would be fantastic. Uh, you could also do um, red bell pepper, roasted red pepper, kind of whatever you want to do. I'm just gonna get this all tossed together. You see I got some pretty colors working in this pan, which is what we want again. So now that we're back to this point, we're getting ready to start building that miso sauce. Again, the butter is kind of the foundation. And oh, these grits. Seriously, this is such a good grits recipe here. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to add in a little rice wine vinegar just to add a little bit of acidity to this, add a little bit more liquid to that pan. I'm going to add in some of our chili sesame oil. This stuff is excellent. A bit of that in there. That'll add a little bit of warmth. Uh, again, not necessary, but super delicious. Highly recommend. And then I'm going to add in about a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half of miso paste. Now miso paste is a very strong ingredient, but it's very, very, very delicious. And we're going to mix this in and let this sort of melt into all of this that we've got working here. Just absolutely beautiful. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to season this a little, again, with our whiskey barrel shoyu that we used last week. This is great. If you don't have this regular soy sauce, it would work just fine. Um, just kind of what you got on hand. But this stuff is beautiful. And this miso glaze is coming together really, really nicely, which is perfect. Oh, it smells so good. So the miso, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is a fermented soybean paste. We're using uh, what's referred to as a white miso or a blonde miso, um, more traditionally referred to as shiro miso. Um, and it's very sweet, full of really nice sort of caramely flavors. Just absolutely beautiful for a lot of different things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a touch of water to my pan, just to kind of thin it out, let it kind of reduce on its own and all come together really nicely. A trick when you're doing sauces at home a lot of times is to add a little bit of water and then let that water reduce down and that gets you a really nice texture. We also want to make sure all that miso paste is dissolved because again, miso paste is really strong. It almost looks and smells like some of the best peanut butter you ever have, but you do not, I repeat, do not want to eat it like peanut butter because it is very, very, very intensely flavored and you will regret it immediately. It will be the saltiest thing you may have ever eaten. So again, our grits getting real thick here. 
which is what we want. It's coming together just beautifully. Now we just want those grits to, again, continue to soak up the rest of this liquid that's in here and get really creamy and thick. So this is very near done. Our miso, just that smell is outrageous. If you can't, you gotta make this just for the smell, really. It's it's kind of there. I'm not gonna give you the cheesy smell of vision line because, you know, cheesy. But this is just absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and give this just a little taste test here. See how things are coming along. Wow. That is so incredibly good. Just absolutely beautiful. Uh, in fact, at this point, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add my shrimp back in and let these just kind of finish poaching through, which won't take too long, a few minutes really. And by that time, our grits should be nice and ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's get some of our garnish ready here because we want to make it all nice and pretty of course that's that's how we do so let's give my grits a little bit more love here oh yeah that's gorgeous it's almost completely absorbed all of that cream and stock which is exactly what we want good mix in just a few more minutes to go on that so we're gonna do something I've got my green onions here so let's do some of these for a pop of green nice and I'm gonna top again with a little pickled ginger just because I really like the way that that looks and the way it adds kind of a nice, sweet, vinegary sort of heat on the end to dishes. Uh, but again, that's entirely up to you. You don't need to do this if you are ginger averse, as we say. So again, I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a rough chop. And nothing too, nothing too small. And this is, Oh, wow. I, I, it doesn't smell like anything I can explain, which is unfortunate, uh, but it just smells outrageously good. Okay, so these grits are very, very, very near done. So I'm going to go ahead, take a little taste, see how we're doing in terms of seasoning. Unbelievable. So rich, so decadent. Definitely needs more salt. Uh, the more fat you add to something, the more salt it can generally take. So this can take a pretty good amount. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a pretty good, generous tablespoon of butter to this. In fact, I'm just gonna add the rest of what I've got. And that's going to help, again, even make it creamier and richer, which is what we are looking for. So, oh, so, so, so good. All right. So let me kind of show you what we're looking at. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my heat on my shrimp because those are just about cooked through. And I'll show you my grits here. So this is what we're looking at. That's how nice and creamy these are. Just absolutely beautiful. And this is gonna be a wonderful bed for that miso butter shrimp. Again, just absolutely beautiful. I am very excited for what's going on here. Okay, so let this kinda cook just a bit. And the shrimp, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
We are in a good place here, friends. So I'm gonna grab a plate right here. And I'm gonna get building. So I'm gonna take my grits. Really nice and creamy. I'm going to add some of these right straight to my plate. Like so. But we make our kitchen mess like we do. So I'm just going to go ahead and sort of spread this around a little bit. Now, grits, much like our risotto earlier should be nice and creamy that you can work around just like this. You can just see how it wants to just slowly kind of fill that plate. Again, it's absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna take our shrimp, I'm gonna plate these around like so. I'm gonna leave one in the pan so I can kind of show you for those who are hesitant to work with shell on shrimp. Show you how easy it is to kind of deal with. It's just absolutely gorgeous here. And what we're gonna do now is take my spoon and just spoon some of this really luxurious miso sauce over these shrimp. We'll do a little bit around the edges because why not? And this is really nice. This is gonna taste so incredibly good. Just the smells again working off of this. Unbelievable. Put down a little bit more. Then let's go ahead Hit it with a little bit of this pickled ginger. And just add some pretty, beautiful splashes of color in here. And classic green onion. Kind of a big chunk here. Just tear it up by hand. So, so good. All right, so one last thing I'm gonna do I'm going to take a little bit more of this chili oil and I'm just going to sort of drizzle it around like so. And we have ourselves just a spectacular plate of food here. This is sure to make everyone happy. Look at that. Miso butter shrimp and grits. So good, so, 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 so good. So what I'm gonna do, just so you show you how easy this is, I've got my shrimp here, which is still pretty hot, but I'm gonna go ahead, the shell comes right on off. This is the kind of dish that you wanna just get in there for, and don't worry about getting messy. Now is not the time to worry about that. So the shell's gonna come right on off, you know, some people will go ahead and eat them with the shell on. Um, if the shell gets crispy enough, you can certainly do that if you are into that kind of thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the shell off with the shrimp, run it through my sauce. Again, this would be great with some baguettes too. Wow. That might be one of the best shrimp I've had in a really long time. No joke, so good. Just incredible amounts of flavor. Seriously, incredible. So, so good. Highly recommend giving this a try. Remember, we're open for curbside pickup. You can come in, place your order at the store. Someone will come out to your car to take your order. Uh, you can place your order online for pickup. Totally doable. You can use Lobstergram if you're outside of our delivery radius, or you can use just our regular delivery service for local. So, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow with some more stuff. We've got some fun idea in the works. 
So definitely stay tuned, pay attention for more stuff like this. Talk to you soon.